hard commercial to say, and this moment slipped my mind, but that's okay. Some of you sitting here in the audience are hearing success stories and probably saying to yourselves, man, I'm, so, I'm down here. That's so far up there. How do I accomplish this? How does this ever happen? It's so far away. The next speaker grew up in the streets of Bronx, New York. Grew up there, need I say any more. He fought his way off the streets. He struggled. Not the greatest education in the world. He had nothing literally, physically. He had a lot mentally, but he had a goal. He had a desire. He had a dream. He said, I have some talent. I want to give and share with other people what I have. I'm a good martial artist. I'm going to open up my own school. And where did he pick to open up? On the streets of Bronx, New York. Tough place. Difficult time. Struggle, struggle. 35 students three years ago. 35, Bronx, New York. Didn't know who Anthony Robbins was. Didn't know who Zig Ziglar was. He didn't know who Nick Kokinas was. He didn't know who anybody was. He just knew that he was fighting for a purpose and had a goal and a dream. To this day, he's pushing 350 active students. His educational funding company check, and it's no secret, it's over 15 grand. He is successful. He has done it. Why did he do it? Think and you shall be. Not be and think. Think and make it happen a reality. He has done it, and I get goose pimples just mentioning his name. I feel like he's my son. I love him dearly. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Fontanez! Hey! to get yourself in state. That's the reason why I got a power move. Can everybody please stand up? Sir! Sure. Okay, this is, um, this is a secret, but this is exactly how you become successful. Hands up. Just follow, please. <laughs> hey, come on. Now just... Okay, wait, first this side. Okay, center. Oh, a little more tone. This side. Put your wrap, right hand up, left hand down. The other right hand. So the chin. Come on, sir. Over your shoulder. Give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah, have a seat, please. The most popular question. Jerry, what are you going to talk about? I don't know. But it's in there. I'm committed to unconscious competency. Something like that. Um, yeah, I was born, born in Manhattan, raised in the Bronx. And uh, let's see. I have so many stories, you know. I got 15 minutes. I have to say it fast. Okay, so everybody, please keep attention. I'm only really joking. Um, Okay, first thing, four years ago, that's what it really was. Four years ago, March of 1988, I was the number one fighter in the nation, but I had a problem. I couldn't keep up with inflation. So after some evaluation, I changed my occupation. Soon I'll have a mansion. But I'm still the champion. Now what that is, is the fact that um, a few years ago, I was a top-rated competitor. And so that's my dream. My dream was to be a top fighter. Many people's drinking. And, um, but I had a problem. The problem was eating. You know, you can't do both. It was pretty difficult. So, thanks to, is she here? I don't know if she's here, but Joy Santa Maria, I would like a big hand for her. She's the reason why. In the Bronx now, we have a top school. And, um, so four years ago, we started with just a few students. And what I'm going to talk about is belief systems. I start off with that. I had limiting belief systems. Figure, okay, here I am. Puerto Rican from the Bronx, right? <laughs> Seventeen. Son was born. Damn, son was born. True story. What now, Batman? Uh, 
Okay. Going to school, it's pretty difficult going to school, taking care of a baby. I don't know if you, any of you have any children, but 8 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, you're waking up. It's difficult to wake up early in the morning or energize and ready to go. And it's pretty difficult. So what happened was I wasn't able to continue with school as far as um, high school. But um, what happened shortly after that was I, I said, well, what do I have that can help me succeed in life? Because I have to be a pool model now. I was placed in this position. One day I'm over here dancing. The next day I'm a dad. Oh, dip. So it was time to just take action, immediate action. And the action was to find out what I had as resources. And the one thing that I really worked at since the age of eight, I'm 26 years young now, since the age of eight was the martial arts, karate. And I had some success with it. So I figured, well, that's the best thing. Let me work with this karate stuff. And like I said in the beginning, I taught in basements, like quite a few people did. And I made, I worked for 3.35 an hour. I went home, got my uniform, I taught karate, three hours a day. That was one class, right, three hours. I trained really hard, you know, you got three hours. Every day, eight days a week, 366 days a year. That's the only way to do it. And what happened was that, I don't know if you have experienced this, but I had problems at work. So I took the problems over to the class and took it out on them. Now, then I was looking forward to going home and really have a good time. So what happened was that I was in this never-ending loop. I was caught up. So making a long story short, I wasn't able to keep the relationship as far as my mother goes. My son is nine years old now. He's a straight-A student. He's a MVP baseball player. He's a top um, martial artist. He picks up his own forms and all that stuff. I don't know where he got it from. But that's one thing. Limited beliefs. I never thought that. See, my goal was to have 100 students. Imagine that. Not Joe. 100 students. That's like a lot of people, right? That was my goal, 100 students. But my problem was, how do you get them into one room at the same time? That's all I knew, right? You know, you take 100 students, they put them into your room at the same time. A lot of people. A oh, real hand, come on! Yeah, and the crowd goes crazy. West Coast, East Coast, South Bronx. There it is. So, like I said, I was in this never-ending loop. And I finally broke out when I made a decision, which most of us love to make, right? Decisions. And the decision was to be different. Let me be different. Notice today I have a nice suit on. With my name in the back. And it's because I want to be different. Why? I don't know. It's just a lot more fun. Everybody's the same. So I like to be different. And different men in my neighborhood being successful. Thank God I grew up in a neighborhood that didn't have too many successful people. <laughs> but otherwise, I don't know if I would have been here. And that's the truth. But um, the belief system, they were limiting. I wanted 100 students. Now, after reading certain books, or so, some books I didn't even understand what I was reading. Like most of you guys, you know, you read the book, Syntax, what's that? Rolex or, or Timex. Syntax is another type of watch. It's in the middle of a Timex. No, no, it's a syntax. <laughs> syntax. That's what that is. But um, to make a long story short, just to jump in the um, from. Oh, by the way, I had five incredible students. Five incredible students. From the five incredible students, I multiplied. And they told two friends. And they told two friends, and so on, and so on. Like the Fabergé commercial, we know. When you talk about influence, who influences us? Advertisers. How do you spell relief? know that. Now, some of this stuff is repetition to many of you, but it may be new. So as a recommendation to come from the Bronx, actually from Spanish Harlem to the Bronx, and to the, I live in a better section of the Bronx, because like everything is situated, just like any city, you have good neighborhoods and bad neighborhoods. But um, Manhattan, to the Bronx, to Florida, I just came back from Hawaii. I was with Tony Robbins at the Mastery course. I wouldn't miss the Mastery. Yeah, I was in underwears, standing in front of 800 people, talking like this. There was an exercise that they had. 
Now, as far as belief system, again, you can go from anywhere you want to anywhere you want to go as long as you believe. That's the bottom line. Some people say, Jerry, how can we have so much confidence? I agree. I've had confidence in a long time because I, I just made believe. Same thing with fighting. I got in the ring, you know. Some of you saw that fight with Billy Blanks. I got upset, really upset, because they spelled my name wrong for the G. I was fighting one day, and they broke my jaw. They blocked with my face. Hurt. Don't block with your face. But, so like I said, you can go from Spanish Harlem to the South Bronx. South, South Bronx. Sam, that's for you, Sam. Sam was asking me to dance. I said, I don't want to have any music. Okay, so Manhattan, South Bronx, Hawaii. I looked inside a volcano. Walked on fire, Kumas, 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 Kumas. Some of you guys may know, right? Forty feet. I went over like this. I said, "Yeah, hey, why not?" Oh, what the hell? We walk on fire. Imagine that. I went skydiving. Why? I don't know. But I figured the people who did it were successful. I, you know, I figure I'll model them. I'll match them. I listen to what types of speakers. And my biggest lessons were from my mother, who's over there. Mom? Hello, Mom. My mother, my brother, my whole family. You guys stand up. That's my immediate family. This is my ESC family. Asa. You know, it's incredible. Some people here, but, okay, this is what's interesting, since I only have a few minutes. We have all these top martial artists, right? And what about Cheech Luzzi? Over there biting his nails. Cheech goes, I say, hey, Cheech, hey, we're going up in a few minutes. <laughs> I went up to Chris Colombo and a number of other people. You guys are really tough, huh? You fight lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. But you would not get on stage. You would not dare get on stage. That's interesting. And, and, and as far as being able to be a role model, we have to develop rapport with the youth. We have to develop rapport. And that may mean that you have to learn how to dance. We even learn the vocabulary. And then once you develop the rapport, you pace and you lead them out of that's vocabulary. So that's the biggest challenge that I, um, I see when people want to help. Everybody here wants to help. Now, do you know exactly how to help? I, I don't know. I'll tell you this much. I'm in the middle age. I'm 26 years young, but I relate to the teenagers because I look as young as them. So I developed rapport by using the same vocabulary first and then let them out of there. Because it's very important that they feel comfortable with you. So the challenge, again, is on you. I would have never listened to tapes or read any books if it wasn't for Mr. Nick Aquinas because he said in one of the tapes back in 88, you have to lead by example. He said, lead by example? Oh, you mean, whatever I do, they're going to follow? I don't want that. <laughs> it's true. It's a, it's a lot easier to just say, well, this is the way you're supposed to do it, pal. And then go over to the bar. Come back and go... I know many of us drink, but honestly, that's one of the little things that children see that. You know, there's a major problem after they see that stuff. I was going, shame, shame, balance, talk to them. I mean, it's your prerogative, you do what you want with your life. But the bottom line is that one of my students recently told me, Mr. Fontenot, you know, I was really upset and hurt. I broke his heart. And it was because he looked at me as a role model. The reason he looked up at me was because he was a little shorter than me. <laughs> so he looked up at me. He said, I was really hurt when I found out that you was doing these things that I know weren't part of the student creed. And I told him, you're wrong. I'm supposed to be able to tell you what to do. Do, do as I say, not as I do. That's do, do. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. I don't really know how much time I have, but I'll be here all day. People ask me, what should I talk about? I didn't, I'm not sure what I was going to talk about, but I know it's in there. I'm committed to unconscious competency. Some of you people know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't know. If you don't know, find out. There's so much information out there. It's incredible. It's really incredible. Um, I listen to Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, um, Napoleon Hill, Hell Nightingale, uh, sometimes to Ned, but not now. <laughs> Check him out. I'm not afraid of him. The last guy I'm listening to right now is Stephen Covey. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Incredible. I don't know what else to say except that um, they do something like this in Hawaii. It means I love you. Do you guys do this right back? Yep, it means I love you. 
and thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you.